Folks, this is Book Talk with uh, Corbin. We have a, an old friend of the show. Brother's been with us a couple of times, Dr. West. Um, and uh, he is... Now, Brother, your position at Urban Cure is... Is that CFO or what is that? COO, Chief Operating Chief. Officer. Chief Operating Officer there at Urban Cure. And uh, as my listeners, you guys know, if you recognize that name, you know, Sister Star Parker, she's the head of that organization. That's an organization we frequently, you know, we really uh, try to do what we can do as far as donating to it and, and promoting it. And so we are, it's a real privilege to have a doctor with us today. And folks, we're going to talk today about free speech and is this whole cancel culture stuff a, a threat to free speech? You know, doctor, uh, it really started coming to mind. I think it was on The View recently when... Mm-hmm. Um, the white lady, the uh, wife of Ozzy Osbourne, she allegedly they didn't like what she had to say during one of the shows. It was this bitter back and forth, and all of a sudden they dig back in her past and they fire the young lady. They fired the woman. Yes. And then with Vogue magazine, I think Teen Vogue, they interviewed some young lady. Young lady said, well, you know, a little ways back, I did say some things that weren't too good, weren't too nice, but uh, apparently... Uh, Someone dug up these these tweets, and uh, they they fired the young lady. And so I started asking myself, you know, I don't read Vogue and I don't watch The View, but is this in any way, in some way, a threat to free speech? This whole cancel stuff. I'll t- tell you what, it's more than a threat to free speech, but it is a threat to free speech. Hmm. But let me put it in context for you so that we understand just how serious it is. Yes, sir. So I'm going to take you back a good 60 years. At the beginning of the 1960s, a young fellow named George Wallace was running for a judicial seat in Alabama, and he lost the election. And when the election was over, he made a declaration And his declaration, and I hope your readers are prepared to hear me say things that some people might find offensive, Mm -hmm. but Wallace's declaration was, I'm never going to be out niggered again. And what we are witnessing today is exactly the politics George Wallace was describing. These are people who are niggering the country by playing the race card. Mm. And they're playing it up and down the social system, up and down the economic system, up and down the political system. They're playing it in those individual cases you cited. They're playing it in Georgia over the election law. They're playing it everywhere you turn. And what does it mean? It means they, like Wallace, young Wallace, see it as the pathway to power. Hmm. That's how he climbed into power in in Alabama 60 years ago after learning from a loss, never to run that risk again. And that's what they're doing now. So it's a throwback. And that's why I say it's more serious than censorship. What they're doing is banning the flames of racial division as a tool to rule the country. The old Latin expression, divide e impera, divide and conquer. That's what this is about. So yes, it's cancel culture, But cancer, the cancel part is just the weapon. It's the gun. It's not the murderer. Right. It's the ones who are using the weapons who are the murderers. And they're using this weapon to divide the country in order to install themselves in positions of power. Do you think that you think it's going to succeed? It is succeeding so far. Look at what happened today. United Airlines declared its sole sensitive reaction to Georgia. Coca-Cola has reacted. Major League Baseball has reacted. Delta Airlines chief executive has reacted. And it continues. And we see people are easily mouthed into accepting the terms of racial division as a basis for any interaction in this society. And as long as they do that, it's going to continue to tear us apart, separate us from one another. And by doing that, by isolating us, going to keep themselves in power. Let me illustrate for you. Who is being harmed most by boycotting Georgia and Atlanta? I'll tell you who. 
we all know it if we stop to think about it, who were all the little people who were going to get a material living, earn a living from having the all-star game in Atlanta? Mm. Those people aren't going to make that money this summer. That's right, brother. And across the board, the people who are going to be hurt are especially people who live in urban areas. They're especially people who look like me, people of modest means. Do the people who are boycotting it, the CEO of Coca-Cola, the CEO of Delta Airlines, do they know that? Yes. They know whom they're hurting. So ask why they're doing it. Why are they doing it, bro? Because it's the way to keep people down and keep the country divided. It's that simple. That's why they're doing it. It is a clever game and a dangerous game. Brother, um, I'm not a real good historian, but you know some of the books I've read here and there and some of the experiences my father shared with me and some of the things I, I experienced, I never saw our struggle as a people, as black folk in the United States, as one that would advocate such ugly division. That's correct. That's correct. And so when you see people like black people lining up to play part in this game, you wonder what's going on, right? Yes. You see Stacey Abrams, one of the ones pushing this. You say, well, what's going on? Because anybody can see that in this game, black folk are just the pinballs. <laughs> they're, they're, they're the things being shot around the board, hitting things, bumping right. into things. They're not the ones at the controls. Right. And so obviously people like Abrams and others uh, Southern uh, Poverty Law Center and many others whom we could name, people like the new senators from Georgia and still others, uh, they are playing this game either out of ignorance or worse, cupidity, mm. because this is how they find their individual path forward at the expense of their brothers and sisters. What should... What should the masses of folks, how should we respond? What are some ways we can respond to this or deal with this? Well, as I say in the company, we're going to stop buying Coke products until Coke apologizes to our brothers and sisters whom they're hurting in Atlanta. That, that's how I start out. We're making, in our case, a business decision as individuals' personal decisions. Because we don't have to ratify this. We don't have to line up and vote for it. We don't have to spend money that keeps us in a stranglehold. Hmm. And that's what it turns out to be. Uh, so I'll find somewhere other way to fly than Delta Airlines. Hmm. And I won't fly United if they're going to follow the path of Delta. There are other airlines around. I mean, you have to start making real decisions if you care. And you have to even put yourself to some degree of discomfort hmm. if you care. But if you're so craven that you just have to have the things you like to have, no matter what kind of indignity you suffer, what kind of insult you suffer, what kind of deprivation you suffer, and you're going to go along with it, then you cannot hope for anything better. Hmm. And and I know with some people I've, I've spoken, I speak to, um, behind closed doors, they're very supportive of what I'm doing. Yes. Um, they'll hand me a check or two, they'll introduce me to somebody who'll give me a check or two who can, so that I can continue doing what I'm doing. But I had one brother just flat out tell me, I can't afford to lose my job. Yes. You know, to go public in stating, you know, his, his honest opinion. He said, I can't afford to lose my job. Is that to some degree just as bad as the government saying, hey, no, you can't say that? Oh, it's just as bad and even worse. And I'll tell you why it's worse. Because when the government says that you can go to court and you can ask the judge at least to say the government is wrong. Mm -hmm. But when a university does it, when a big corporation does it, when a private charity does it, and all these other organizations outside of government, they can actually stifle you and shut you up and they can't be at all gotten back at for doing so. You can't go to court to get even with them. Yes, if it's a public university, you can sue them. If it's a private university, you won't get very far trying to sue them. 
So yes, they could cancel you, censor you, and they can fire you. Look at how many people are being fired. Not just these prominent celebrities, but even people at Smith College, for example. Yes. And these were the, 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 the cafeteria workers and the janitors, etc., who put through this critical race instruction for something they even, weren't even guilty of. And others fired just for being in proximity to them. Mm. Yes. So, so yes, this is, I mean, this is tyranny, brother. This is what tyranny looks like. And it may be that it's a small scale now. But remember, it always starts out small. It takes time before it snowballs and then engulfs a whole community. Right. Are you optimistic that as a, as a, as a culture we'll eventually sort of beat this down, beat it back? I wish I were, but I'm not. Uh, and the reason I'm not is because of what you just said about the brother who didn't dare risk his job. Because I am increasingly of the opinion that America has no future independently of being rescued by black patriots. Mm. And unless black people have the courage to em patriotically embrace and defend the United States against this onslaught, I don't think the United States will survive. Wow. So you say black folk in general and black yes. conservatives in particular? Black patriots. Black patriots. There must be an ex open and profoundly passionate expression of love for this country by black people to save this country. And if that is not forthcoming, I don't think this country survives. Wow. Brother, I'm gonna end, end on that note, even though it's a little solemn, but to some degree, it's really, it's really inspiring too. Because, you know, it, it, it I mean, if I, I can do that. I can do that much. Yes. And hopefully many other black folk would just say, you know, yeah, we, I can do that much. Yes. And I need to do that much. That's exactly it. Yeah, I need to do that much. Brother, tell me some of the websites where people can go to buy your books in particular. Well, uh, my first website, of course, it's unfortunately hasn't been refreshed in a while, but it's still WilliamBarkleyAllen.com. Okay. So that's with a name spelled out without any spaces, WilliamBarkleyAllen.com. Okay. That gives you my background. Lots of my essays are posted there, and my books are listed there. And there have been a couple of books since then that I haven't added yet because I've been preoccupied doing other things. But that will get you started, and you'll figure out how to get in touch with me. Right, great. Right. And I want to encourage my, my, my listeners to do that, uh, to go to that, that website and to start reading more and more things. Uh, by this brother because we're going to have to be intellectually armed to do what he's just called us to do. Patriots, black patriots to stand up and, and to do what we need to do and say what we need to say to save this country from, from tyranny. Point blank, from tyranny. From tyranny. Brother, as always, it's been great. I will be in touch. Thank you again so much. I thank you. It's really always a pleasure to spend some time with you.